today, um, but Bruce had to cancel um, because Bruce's father passed away. Um, so Bruce is actually attending his father's funeral right now, um, which is, yeah, it's not the most fun thing in the world. So I was actually thinking that I would take a photo here uh, where we kind of say, hey, Bruce, uh, and then we treat it to him because uh, we miss Bruce. So uh, let's, let's do a wine instead. Can you say hi, Bruce, and one, two, three? <laughs> Let's try that one more time. <laughs> hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks. So, Matthias, I think your computer is showing a spinning beach ball, so if we might have to nuke it. And yes, it is a Mac, it's not a Windows. <laughs> Good to go, we need to mic you up. He right here, right here. So. E to tight, E to tight. Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's, let's, let's give Matthias a hand. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I'm Matthias. I'm basically the guy nobody paid to see. So that's a good start. Um, I'm based in Copenhagen. I'm a Copenhagen Node developer. Um, disclaimer first, I usually do my slides in, uh, in my editor in ASCII. But uh, I talked to, um, to Kenneth and he was like, this is a front-end conference. So uh, I decided to become a front-ender and try my luck in HTML. So it might bug down, but it's pretty cool. Anyways, Matthias, I'm uh, Mavintosh on Twitter and uh, GitHub. If you want to get in, uh, talk to me. So I'm going to talk about three things. JavaScript, which I love. I'm a big JavaScript fan. Uh, super language. That is also OK. Uh, <laughs> I'm not here to start a flame war. Uh, and another thing that's, uh, that I really like is uh, BitTorn. Uh, I might throw in a little bit of mad science. Uh, it's a, uh, thing I like to do, where we try to push things too far. Uh, so yeah, let's see how it goes. So again, I know you all, I know everybody here is a, or most of you guys are probably front -enders, but I want to take a step back first and talk about, you know, how does BitTorrent work? Because this is going to be the f like the foundation for my turn. So how many in here know BitTorrent? All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm a big, big fan of BitTorrent. And uh, one of the things that I usually find is that when I talk to BitTorrent, and probably if I talk to most people in here and I ask them, you know, what is BitTorrent? What do you think about BitTorrent? They usually think one thing, <laughs> piracy, <laughs> uh, which is totally unfair. I mean, it's, it's fair because it's, it's <laughs> it is widely deployed in, uh, it is widely deployed in, in, uh, in piracy, but it's, uh, it's, it's just way, way more than this. It's way, way cooler than just piracy. I mean, piracy is just, uh, um, So let's talk about the normal way we fetch content online. So, you know, I think everybody tried to fetch something online. Uh, it's basically a process. The normal way of doing it is basically you have, uh, it turned out okay, uh, some sort of server, a trusted server that we, all know that has some files. Uh, these could be any size. What you do is you, you're a client. You talk to the server and you say, dude, give me this file. And he's like, yeah, sure. Here's the file. Boom. All right. So that's nice and simple. Uh, so why would we change this? Well, there is this um, cool thing about servers is that let's say I share something, right? 
actually have something, some a video or something, anything. It could be a can it's wine, um, and it becomes hugely popular. It's going it's going viral, and what a natural conference uh, consequence of this going viral is that we'll have a million people coming here and say like I want this content, I want this content, please give me this content, right? So I mean, what happens? So we got our server, and uh, we have a bunch of clients coming in now, and this server's like, yeah, here's a file, here's a file, here's a file, here's a file. Um, it works okay. The server is starting like tune up a little bit. If you log in, the load average will probably increase a little bit. More clients come, right? It's like, ah, shit, more content, more content. There's usually only one natural consequence of this. It's like the server disappears, and uh, we're not rival anymore. I mean, we just lost our moment of fame because no one can get our content. They just get a page, a nice Chrome dinosaur page that says like, uh, dude, totally gone. Um, so, there's actually, if you, if you think about this, like, high, very high level wise, it's super, super easy to fix, right? Because we got a million clients coming in. What if instead of just having that one, like the server guy, just have the clients send the data to each other, right? It's super simple. It's this really, really basic idea. So instead of having like the, the drawing where we have the big ass server in the middle, we would just have a scenario where we have like a bunch of peers. Some of them have some data and just like shoo, 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 sharing data to each other, right? And I mean, what happens if a, if a peer goes down? Doesn't matter, we just find another peer. Boom, 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 share content, right? So this is basically what people mean when we talk about peer-to-peer. -peer. So it's this really simple concept of, instead of having like one centralized server, and in my world, centralized is a really, really bad word. So uh, we have a bunch of peers that just have some data and just like send it around, right? Super simple. However, <laughs> like most simple ideas, uh, this introduces a lot of interesting concepts. So, I mean, now we have a bunch of peers sharing Kenneth Swine <coughs> uh, uh, video. So, I mean, how can we trust that the video we're getting is actually the right video? I mean, there's no really no way of knowing this. I mean, we might be friends here and we might say like, we're only gonna share this one file, it's, it's cool, it's the right file. But I mean, it only takes like one peer that, that's like, yeah, how about instead of this thing, I put something hilarious in like, a, I don't know, a dart conference or <laughs> uh, <laughs> something similar. Uh, how can we know that this was not really the thing we wanted, right? So this is the kind of thing where BitTorrent comes in and apply some really, really, really nice solutions to this. So here's one thing we can do. So we have this file, it could be a gigabyte, it could be a terabyte, it could be a petabyte, it doesn't really matter. We just take this file and we split it up into like small pieces, right? So normally these pieces are like half a meg, 10 megs, depending on how big the file is. And we do a, sh a hash of this, and I know hash is maybe not a really front-end word, but uh, it's just a digest of the file, so we can, that's really small, like a couple of bytes. Um, so what we do now is that if some peer sends me a piece, and let's assume that I have this list of hashes somewhere, because it's way smaller than content. Uh, no, sorry, we chop it up, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so let's assume that I, I get this piece. The only thing I need to do now to, to verify that this piece is actually correct is look at my hash that I already have. For the sake of simplicity, let's just assume that I have it. And uh, take the piece I got in, I hash it again, and I just verify that the hash is the same, right? Super, super simple, it's really simple. So now I can reject all the things that, that didn't look right and just tell everybody else that that peer is an idiot and uh, move on. <laughs> um, so still we, need, we have to still have the same problem because now we have a list of hashes that everybody needs to know about and uh, like it's kind of global state, right? So we still need to somehow get this uh, list out there. Uh, um, so really, really super simple solution to this is just take this list of hashes and uh, put it on uh, a trusted server, right? Like the big ass server in the middle. So we would just take this server, take this list of hashes. The list of hashes is what we in everyday life call a torrent file. It's basically what a torrent file is. Put that on our trusted server. So now if I wanted to get this torrent, I would just call the server and be like, hey, dude, send me the list of hashes so I can get it from other people. 
and uh, I'll totally uh, get data from them instead. So <coughs> this introduces a fun problem because this list of hashes can be pretty large. And I mean, if we're sharing a really fun video, we still get a lot of traffic for the torrent file. I mean, there's a lot of people hitting this uh, torrent file. And if you just, if you have someone like the FBI, they really like this model because they just need to take down the, the server and nobody will get the content, right? Um, so this is kind of like a centralized thing again that we need to do something about. Also, I mean, <laughs> it gets a lot of load, right? <laughs> We've seen this scenario before. It might blow up. Well, we have the same problem. It's, we have a popular file we put on a server that uh, we want to share. So we can basically just reply recursion to this problem. So people know recursion, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, it's basically just, um, it's the same problem. So what we do is we apply the same logic to it. We basically just take the hash list of hashes, chop that up, up into pieces, hash them once. So we take the list of hashes, distribute them, and make one single hash of everything. And we call that an info hash. All right? So now we have a scenario where we can just take the peers, we can just exchange these hashes, individual hashes, right? I can get a hash from someone. Do, 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 do. Hashes come in, hashes go out. Uh, and to verify it, we just need the one hash that's the hash of all hashes. <laughs> And just like hash everything we got, and then we then we then we can make sure that these hashes hashes are actually correct, and then we can start fetching the actual data. So it's a really really simple concept, right? And if anybody has ever tried to download some uh, torrent in these days, you'll probably have experienced something called a magnet link. And a magnet link is basically just this hash, just a list of data that you can put anywhere that you trust, and you can use this to bootstrap the entire system. That's basically how it works. Um, it's, in my opinion, extremely simple. I mean, <laughs> uh, compared to the benefits you get and compared to how crazy these kind of things can be, it's really, really simple because the protocols is practically super simple. <laughs> uh, but it is another problem because, I mean, even though we have this mate link, we have our torrent file. We still have the problem that we need to download data. And to download data, we need to know who has our data. And this is where it probably gets a little less front endy. I mean, this is very front endy for me so far. So far, sorry. Um, so, how do we find peers? Well, <laughs> there's this concept called the distributed hash table. Have anybody heard about a distributed content? All right, I see hands. That's cool. So, basically, a distributed hash table is like any table but it's distributed. <laughs> so it's, it's a place where you can put in data, and it's shared across multiple peers, and you can get data out using a key. So it's a key value store that's distributed. So a really, really simple solution to find peers is that we just, as the key in this table, we just use our info hash, the magnet link. We put that in, and we put an address to ourselves. It's like, I'm here, this is me. And then anybody else who wants to know who shares this Info hash, this magnet link can just go to this DHT, the distributed hash table, ask, like, here's the key, cool. Get that address, address out, try to connect to it. We don't even need to, like, get all the data, we just need a couple of peers. So if it's, like, eventual consistent, doesn't really matter. That's the really, really cool thing about it. Uh, and the way you join this network, because you basically need one other node to join it, is you either, there's a couple of known nodes, you just try on those, or in the magnet link, there's sometimes some metadata attached to it. It's like an address to someone in a DHT. <coughs> so this network is huge, this DHT network. Basically, every time someone starts a torrent client on their own computer, they're, about, they're part of this database, which is insane. And uh, I, I found some, there are people trying to estimate how large this is. And like at any time, it's around 10 million nodes. I mean, it's, a, it's the equivalent of having a database where you have 10 million servers sharing data. Uh, it's insane. It's probably the biggest database deployment out there. And I mean, to take down the BitTorrent network, you would have to go to each 10 million people and knock down their doors and chop off their internet. It's insane. 
Um, I think that's pretty awesome <laughs> and simple. Uh, so that's basically how we bootstrap that BitTorrent network. All right. So I hope you're all still awake um, because we're getting to the fun parts. So what I did was I, I've, I started for a while. I thought it was, it was interesting. Um, I'm really into Node. I love Node.js. A big part of Node.js is streaming. Streaming basically just means getting data instantly, but just getting parts of data. Um, so I mean, if we can combine BitTorrent with Node with streaming, it would be pretty cool. Um, because BitTorrent is an insanely good way of distributing like enormous amount of content, right? Uh, and there's a lot of content out there. I mean, th I don't think there are even our estimates of how much content there is there. It's just crazy. Crazy amounts of cool content. Um, yeah, so if we could get, make a way to make some sort of algorithm or something that would allow us to access this content instantly, and when I mean instantly, I mean like, let's say you have a 20 gig torrent file, or 20, 20 gig content that's not bit torrent, and you just want to get the first part of it, you could just get it like this, instead of having to wait and download all 20 gigs, right? So how can we, how can we make this work? Um, well, streaming just means that we have, I don't know if you remember, but when I talk, talked about BitTorrent, it basically just means taking a file and chopping it up to pieces and distributing these, each small piece. So streaming it conceptually is actually really, really simple because it just means Instead of getting a random piece, we just get the piece we want, the piece someone is requesting. Um, and we basically just do this based on demand. So if I want piece five, because I'm streaming that, I just fetch piece five. So it's actually pretty trivial to implement this because you just have the pieces, you have a bunch of peers, you just take, like, I want piece five, and you just tell some peer, hey, get me piece five and uh, give that back to me. Um, so it's a super, super simple solution. However, there is this scenario now that this peer up here, he might be like really, really slow. He might be on crappy 4G internet. Uh, so what happens? Well, basically, if you have a peer that's really, really slow, you will get a lot of like high latency, which means that it'll take a long time to fetch this half a meg meg. And if you have something that has like really high latency, it's not really streaming. I mean, it's just, you're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. Um, so I worked on this a bit and I actually implemented a new solution that sounds like the same, but it's way cooler. So instead of just fetching it from one peer, you could just fetch it from multiple peers, which basically means fetching the same data twice, but these peers might, there might be better peers than others. Some might be really, really fast. That will replace the slow one. So if we have a BitTorrent and we're connected to like 100 peers, we couldn't just throw 100 peers at it because that would mean we would waste 99% of our bandwidth. But we could do something like pick the top five and pick them based on like knowledge that how fast have they been in the past? Have you seen them before? Stuff like that, right? So we basically just get a scenario like this where we have a piece we want and we fetch that from multiple peers. Uh, it still has the like we this uh, same problem that we might have an evil peer come in, and he's like, uh, stop sending us data or stop sending us bad data. And now we're like, only have one guy, and we kind of fall back to the thing where if this guy in the bottom becomes really slow, the kind of thing breaks down because we get high latency. So we can do this thing to solve this problem that I like to call the uh, hot swapping, where we just detect this. Like the the tech that guy becomes slow, his, his net network is dropping, his speed is dropping to zero. Basically, just kill him and reselect a new one, right? Sounds super simple, but I mean, it's peer to peer in practice, you need to think about these things. Um, and that allows us to do a concurrent fetch of really, really critical pieces, like the first part of a movie, for example, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, we still waste a bit of bandwidth because we fetch the same piece twice and we fetch the same data twice. But it doesn't really matter because usually, uh, unless you're in a uh, backwards country, uh, your internet download speed is, is faster than what you need to stream. I mean, video these days, even HD is 
encoder at a level where your home internet is probably a bit faster. So it's fine because we'll buffer up and it'll be fine. All right, <laughs> practical part. So I, I implemented this algorithm a while back as a node module because I like node and this is frontend ish. Uh, it's called torrent stream. It's really cool. It's really like it. I think it follows the node philosophy of being a really small module that does one thing and one thing only, and that is stream torrents. Um, it basically allows you to do something like this. It's a very, very small abstraction where you pass in a torrent file or torrent link, magnet link, <coughs> and it builds a small abstraction that allows you to do a restream to this torrent. Do people know what streams is in Node? Is that a thing? So streams is basically just Node's abstraction of fetching a little bit of data on demand. And it even support, supports like random access. So you can have, if you have a torrent, you can skip in the torrent and just say, I want bytes uh, 0 to 100. Or you can say, I want bytes 1,000 to 2,000. Um, so it's a really, really cool Node module that by itself is a really, really low level binding. Um, so people usually, <laughs> some people see this and it's like, yeah, that's fun. That's cute. Uh, can't really imagine what I would do with this, but I mean, it's fun that you try. <coughs> well, in my opinion, this is really not a gimmick. Uh, if, you look at, if you look online and see of, like, what's out there, there's stuff like Netflix that are streaming video, right? And it's a billion dollar industry. It's, it's huge and it's ever growing. I mean, more and more services are coming up in the cloud that's kind of centralized. Uh, that shares content. Um, and I found this study in the Wall Street Journal that's like, during peak hours, Netflix consumes something like a third of the internet bandwidth. <laughs> and I was like, I was reading that over and over again. I was like, a third? I mean, just imagine how much bandwidth that is. It's crazy. It's, it's like the internet. You can't even put a size on that, almost. Even these guys try. Uh, I mean, it's a third of all internet. It's insane. It's all centralized to Netflix. I mean, this center, Netflix itself is distributed to have a bunch of servers, but I mean, it's still Netflix as a container. We, we rely on Netflix. What if we could, instead of just relying on Netflix, we could just take some of this video and start streaming it between peers instead, right? But having the same experience of Netflix in the sense that we stream video, we get it on demand. So I implemented this. Uh, it's called PeerFlix. It's peer-to-peer -peer streaming of video in real time uh, to VLC, because VLC is awesome, uh, using torrent stream. It's basically a 300-line node module. And I would like to show that now. So, yay. <laughs> so it has a command line interface right now. Uh, I just need to find my uh, folder. Uh, so it's basically a command line tool that just you can pass a magnet link. So I have a real cool magnet link here somewhere. Yeah. So this is a magnet. Can people see this? Is this too large? Uh, large enough? So. It's a program that you can pass in a magnet link, and then you can tell it to boot up VLC with the dash V command. Uh, and what we'll do is, OK, so the UI is fucking up a little bit. doesn't really matter. It will go out. to multiple peers and start facing this data. And the really cool thing about my demo video is that the first 10, 10, 10 seconds of it is, is black, uh, so people know it is streaming. Uh, but this, this video we're watching now is basically just pieces coming in from all over the world, from multiple peers, that are streaming this, this Star Trek fan fiction that someone made and put up that's really popular. So it's like super well seated. Um, so in this here, you can basically see that we're fetching data from multiple peers. And the real, real cool thing about this is that it, it uses the, the same thing that I built into to torrent stream to do random access. So we can even do stuff like this where we say, like, yeah, I want to see in the middle. And it will like recalibrate the swarm 
and fetch new data. And did you see how fast that was skipping? I mean, if you think about what's happening there, it's crazy. It's like, I'm clicking there, but what's happening underneath is, oh, we're connected to these 30 people. I want to get this piece now. So I'm just fetching this piece instead, uh, using the algorithm that I talked about. But on the fly, right, we have no margin for error, because every time we waste a second, it's the guy sitting at the screen like, oh. Um, I mean, we can even skip to that part. And, and there's sound also. I can hear the sound here. So sometimes the videos you use have, this is AV, and it sometimes has some encoding problems when you skip. So that's fun. Uh, so we can just reach back. Boom. Anyways, uh, so it's a really cool, fun little problem that I did, program that I did, and uh, some people even found it and thought like, this is really cool, and decided to wrap it in a UI and do a bunch of illegal stuff with it. It's called uh, Popcorn Time. I don't know if you know it. But, um, <laughs> which is kind of like a really bad idea. But um, <coughs> uh, I really like the, the fact that it's, this, is, this really showcases what you can do with BitTorrent, right? Uh, and this is just something that I did one guy, and now a bunch of con contributors. Um, so I really love that demo. So this open, if you think about this, this open up scenarios. I was, like a while back, we had the World Cup, right? And I was watching the, some of the popular matches on public television that have streams. And I noticed that every time we watched a really popular match, it would either like drop all the time, I had to restart it, or the quality would be very grainy because they knew that a million Danes were sitting here watching this. So they was like, shit, we need to distribute content to a million Danes. We just lower the quality so we distribute more data. Well, using something like peer-to-peer -peer video, we could do exactly the opposite. It's like, hey, a million people are here. Look at all this bandwidth we have. Shit. Bump up the quality, right? And if you just think about that thing for a second, it's like, what? That's just so weird. I mean, it's like, the more people who watch it, the better it is. That's the kind of scaling thing you, you want, that you're always looking for. Uh, and the best thing is that also, the cost of distributing is distributed on everybody, and so we don't have a, like a centralized bandwidth thing. Um, that's, I think that's really, really, really cool. Uh, and it, I mean, as a, as a developer, and I implemented this. I know how simple it is to implement, and that's just, I mean, it still blows my mind that this is possible. Uh, so, I promised a bit of mad science. Uh, so, I've seen other people doing this kind of thing, like streaming BitTorrent to video, uh, and it's fun. Uh, and it's cool and super useful. But once you start, like if you're a hacker and you're in this space and you love like, JavaScript, you know that JavaScript is really cool because you can do a lot of things fast. There's not so much hassle with development and stuff like that. You get to this realization, I mean, we could basically stream anything to anywhere as long as it's streamable. Um, so I was like, I, I, I talked to Kenneth, this weekend, uh, and he asked me, like, please do this, come help me out at this conference. <laughs> I was like, ah, uh, it's front end. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was like, um, okay, I need some front end shit for this thing. Uh, so what you do is you go on Wikipedia, right, and you try uh, searching for all kind of front end data sets that I can visualize. I was like, whoa, it's so hard, so hard to find any good stuff. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff there, but anything like that. I had a really tight schedule also. Uh, then I realized, I came to this realization, that all of Wikipedia itself is on BitTorrent. There is an actual BitTorrent out there that contains everything, all of Wikipedia. It's like huge. Uh, and it's really well seeded by, uh, by a bunch of people. So a couple of days ago, I was like, shit, I need to make this work. Uh, so I'm launching a new program today. It's called uh, it's called Peer Wiki, <laughs> uh, and it's it's <laughs> it allows you to uh, to browse Wikipedia peer to peer using BitTorrent, which is awesome. Uh, and I would like to demo this. And disclaimer: this is insanely bleeding edge, um, so it's probably not going to work. 
like, just for fun, I committed outside in the parking lot before <laughs> this thing. I was a little bit late because my push was trying to go in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, actually, it's, anyways, yeah, hacks, nice. Um, so, it's basically a node module that's also a web server. Uh, wiki. That allows you to do one thing. It's just builds a web server that uh, contains all of Wikipedia. Um, so I should be able now to go into my browser. Boom. So this is a little, 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 little this is, I mean, this is the perfect demo, like looking up BitTorrent and a BitTorrent talk using BitTorrent on Wikipedia. Uh, so this is, I think this is really, really fun because you can do stuff like, I mean, this torrent is fucking huge. And I can, I can do like, click on shit here. And what it will do is, it will go out to people, try to fetch it. Uh, oh, two seconds. Uh, let me just enable this thing so we can see what's going on. Oh, that was too much. Stop. So I'm, I'm, I won't get too technical here, but the way this torrent works is that it has an index. It's fucking huge. It has an index, and to find the content you're looking for, you basically need to binary search this entire index. But when we do the binary search, we're actually jumping between peers. Uh, so like every time we do a search, like, hey, ask this guy in Ukraine. Oh, no, it's in Russia. Oh, and it's just goes like, uh, so when I click this peer-to-peer -peer link here, what will happen is that, I don't know if you can see this, but it'll, it's looking for peer-to-peer, -peer, and now it found something in St. Louis, and it's like regional because we're getting closer to P, P and it's like Philadelphia. P uh, and like this gets faster the more we go because we're connecting to more and more peers. So now we actually found a peer-to-peer -peer article, and we'll see this starting to load here, right? Hello, Lynn. Um, and it even loads like all the static assets here. This picture is in BitTorrent. It's in the same torrent. Uh, if it had video, it would be here also. It's <laughs> I love this. Um, <laughs> um, so as you noticed, the lookup is kind of slow. So we can do this pattern when we deal with this kind of thing, because like, just fi figuring out where to look in that big ass torrent w w involves a search, but we can just offload the search because the search is just a like it's a static file. We can just index the file and put that on a small server or like even distribute the index because the ind index, when gzip is not that big, it's like uh, 50 max. So I did that in the parking lot. Um, so it's probably not going to work. Um, so it has this flag now called use index. Oh, let me just enable uh, debugging so I can see what's going on. Ooh. Um, so now when we click for stuff, that's it will see how fast that was? Because it's like, uh, it's using an index now to find the indexes, so it, it needs to do like, oh, that's, that's a bit slower. It needs to do like uh, 30 times less jumps. Uh, so it's out there now, you can install it. It's uh, npm install, PRWiki, try it out. And when we're browsing this, we're actually helping people, uh, we're also sharing it, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. I'll just quickly go through this. Uh, I took this even further, <laughs> uh, because I was like, you know what I mean, what if we could read uh, BitTorrent streams as regular files. And uh, we actually can because there's a thing called Fuse that allows us to build like a node app that's a file system. So I just took that, combined that with torrent stream, 100 lines of code. And <laughs> it gives us this really, really crazy thing where we can just, I mean, mount any fucking torrent as a file system. And just think about that. It's crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit behind here, so I'll just go straight to the fun thing. <laughs> we can... Um, we can uh, do um, torrent mount. 
and then we can just pass the Ubuntu uh, uh, ISO file. So Ubuntu is on BitTorrent. And we can just find that. Look, I'm just in my regular file browser here. Slides. Uh, and I have a, a drive here. If I go into that drive, I have Ubuntu. So I'm like, what, what would you do with Ubuntu? Well, we basically just need to install it in VirtualBox. So we can just spin up VirtualBox, find this Ubuntu uh, thing on the drive using my regular file browser. Uh, slides, slides. Oh, what's the access for me? Uh, here it is, slides. It's in this folder as it's. There we go. <laughs> click the click the Ubuntu Live CD. We can now launch this virtual machine. And what will happen is that this thing is not here, but uh, I mean it will go out and try to fetch as the virtual machine is reading from the ISO file. Uh, we're in Denmark, so we should put it in Danish. Uh, <laughs> And start installing it. It's insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's basically it, and many more stuff. Uh, so if you're into the space, you should come hang out. Um, uh, it's moving rapidly. It's it's snowed. It's crazy. There's a bunch of really cool things coming out. That is a thing I'm involved in. That's like a peer-to-peer -peer data sharing thing. Peer maps is a fucking crazy thing. It's like Google Maps on BitTorrent. Uh, <laughs> which is also like, what? Uh, but it basically just allows us to like kill cool maps, which is fucked up. Uh, lots more on NPM. If you're into this kind of thing, join IRC, join StackVM. That's the secret mad science channel. Don't tell anyone. Uh, WebTorrent, like WebTorrent is trying to bring this magic to the browser using no plugins, which is like, what? Uh, Somebody is probably going to jail for that. Uh, <laughs> IPFS is also insane. Check it out. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias. This was amazing and mind-blowing. So I'm really thankful for, for you helping us out when, when Blue Bruce had to cancel. So thanks again. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> so next up is Phil. Let's just get things connected here. So while we get Phil connected, um, I asked Phil to, to come here uh, to talk a bit about static site generation. Um, the first time I, uh, I saw Phil uh, was uh, at Frontiers in Amsterdam, uh, where he gave an amazing talk about